Gotta be dreaming. Welcome back to our Resident Evil series, where we explore the Resident Evil lore by looking at each game's story in detail. In this video, we will be looking at the lore of Resident Evil 3 Nemesis. So let's get started. The live action CGI opening cutscene of the game shows news stories of the outbreak in Raccoon City pouring in as Umbrella scientists wind up working on their most recent project, the Nemesis. A nemesis containing pod is seen being put onto a helicopter after the opening title scene. So what is the nemesis? The nemesis, also known as the pursuer, is a T-103 tyrant clone and as such has all of the typical traits of a T-103 tyrant, including superhuman strength, resilience, and regeneration. But unlike its relatives, the nemesis alpha parasite has further improved it giving it newer and more potent abilities. Because the Nemesis Alpha Parasite has taken over its body, the Nemesis not only has human level intelligence, but also exhibits rational thought and self-awareness, which enable it to do complicated tasks like using weapons in battle on its own. Also, unlike its relatives, the Nemesis can undergo unique regenerative mutations, causing its body to heal from traumatic events like rocket launchers to the face. Anyways, let's go back to the story. Jill Valentine has a nightmare in which she shuts the bathroom door and closes the window. When she turns off the sink's tap, blood starts pouring in. She notices herself starting to change when she glances up, and she flees in a panic into the shadows. She notices that she has changed physically when she comes back into the light. She grabs a nearby weapon and places it against her temple realizing she doesn't have much time left. Then she fires and awakens. <gasps> Just a typical Tuesday night nightmare, if you ask me. The game begins at 8.07 p.m. on September 28th. Brad Vickers, the Stars helicopter pilot during the events of the previous game, calls Jill in a panic when she falls asleep while conducting research on Umbrella from her apartment. He tells her she must escape right as the nemesis crashes through the wall, cutting him off. She dashes down a hallway, rushes past another apartment, and finally climbs down a fire escape to narrowly escape the nemesis' grasp. She descends and takes in the devastation of Raccoon City before returning to the apartment complex. The nemesis ambushes Jill once more, and she almost gets grabbed by one of its tentacles before escaping as it tries to pin her with building debris. Jill runs into Brad, who says that although he doesn't know what that thing is, he is aware that it is pursuing the star's members that are in Raccoon City. The two are forced to flee inside a bar as zombies overturn adjacent barricades. However, zombies manage to get inside, and one bites Brad. Brad then understands there is no time left and orders Jill to flee and not to make the same mistake he did. Come on, Jill. We know how this ends. No, I don't. Are we still a team? Always. Then do me a favor. Go fuck up like I do. Go! Yeah. Brad gives his life in order to fight off the zombies, and Jill promises to meet a helicopter atop the parking garage building. She finds Daria Rosso as she makes her way into a storage room. Dario was a salesman who was with his family in the Raccoon City during the outbreak. When the outbreak started, Dario and his family were forced to fend for themselves. Attempting to escape the encroaching infected hordes through the ruined streets of Raccoon City without protection or chance of aid. 
Sometime during the city's collapse, Dario's mother, wife, and daughter were killed in the chaos, leaving Dario as the lone survivor of his family. When Jill found him, Dario finally reached the safety of the warehouse. He was a completely broken and scared man. Jill is unable to persuade him to help her escape since he has locked himself inside a storage container. Jill eventually leaves without him and Dario is never seen again, leading many to theorize that he was attacked after exiting the storage container, though it is not certain. I like to dream and think that maybe he escaped and who knows, maybe even built himself a new home out of a new container all for himself. After her encounter with Dario, Jill enters the parking garage, navigates through a few zombies, and then takes an elevator to the roof, where the helicopter is waiting. And of course, Nemesis appears out of the shadows as the helicopter explodes. Jill manages to crawl out of the carnage and makes her way inside a car. She uses the car to crush into the creature and escape before the car explodes and burns away the nemesis's face mask, allowing her to finally see her pursuer for what he really is. As the nemesis approaches her, Jill is saved by Carlos Oliveira, who temporarily disables nemesis with an anti-tank rocket launcher before escorting her to a subway station on Redstone Street for safety. Hey, fuck this. Hey, easy lady, I got you. Who are you? What are you doing? James Carlos, and I'm saving you. Come on, let's get you someplace safe. Now that's a rescue. After that, Carlos reveals to Jill that he works for Umbrella Biohazard Countermeasure Service, or UBCS for short. When Jill learns of this, she lashes out at Carlos, accusing him of being to blame for the chaos in Raccoon City. Carlos has no idea what Jill is talking about, but Jill, of course, doesn't know that. Forced to leave, Jill has no choice but to accompany Carlos. Eventually, they make their way to a subway car where Mikhail Victor is located. Mikhail Victor served as the captain and leader of Carlos's platoon. He was warm-hearted, recognized for his impressive leadership abilities, and skilled in the planning and execution of operations. Mikhail was born in the former Soviet Union. As was required by Soviet law, he served in the Soviet army for two years, though it is said he remained in the army for several years later. Following the collapse of the Soviet Union, tension arose with respect to certain ethnic groups that fought for their independence. Mikhail became involved due to his wife, who was from one such group, and offered his support and experience to the rebel cause. The rebel group was eventually taken down by the Russian government, leading to Mikhail being captured and sentenced to death. That is when Umbrella approached Mikhail and offered him an amnesty deal. He agreed to join the company's UBCS in exchange for his freedom and the guarantee safety of his men. So back to the story now. Once Jill arrives with Carlos, Mikhail asks Jill for assistance in rescuing several survivors by using a subway train. Jill grudgingly agrees, but only because she wants to save the civilians rather than the UBCS troops. Then Carlos tosses her a radio, tells her that they should stay in touch, and calls her Super Cop. All right, Super Cop. Here you go. We can use this to stay in contact. I know what a radio is. Carlos advises Jill to go for the substation as she reaches the top of the Raccoon City streets. Once she reaches the main road, he instructs her to take the alley, but she finds that it has been set on fire and he calls her a tall glass of water, which Jill does not appreciate for some reason. Maybe you show you a tall drink of water like yourself to put out a few flames. <sighs> Fuck you. Jill then makes her way through the streets and alleys to find a fire hose, which she uses to extinguish the flames by connecting it to a fire hydrant close by. When Jill enters the structure, she discovers an injured Murphy Seeker, 
who looks like he was bitten by a zombie. Murphy was a mercenary for the Umbrella's UBCS, serving as a sniper for Alpha Platoon. Murphy was considered shy and friendly despite his large physique, and he was regarded as an excellent soldier. Murphy was deployed with the rest of the UBCS platoons in Raccoon City during the outbreak. But because the severity of the outbreak was so far worse than the UBCS estimated, the platoons were slowly exterminated one by one. Murphy was the last known survivor of the Alpha Platoon. On the night Jill found him, Murphy had survived a brutal fight against a horde of zombies. Murphy was severely injured and was believed to be infected although there was a report to suggest that he may have not been exposed to the infection despite his injuries. In any event, Murphy's injuries prevented him from continuing on his way. A few moments after Jill runs into Murphy, Nikolai Zinoviev arrives from behind, and refusing to wait for confirmation that Murphy was indeed infected, fatally shoots Murphy in the head before Jill can stop him. Nice to meet you too, Nikolai. Surprise, surprise, Nikolai turns out to care for nobody except for himself later on. So let's talk about Nikolai, or as he likes to call himself, the man who would sell his grandmother for the right price. Okay, maybe he doesn't actually call himself that, but he does say there's a price tag for everything, even letting the world burn. So that should tell you the kind of guy Nikolai is. Nikolai was born in Moscow, the capital of the then Soviet Union. Following the collapse of the Soviet Union, Nikolai was recruited by Umbrella, where he served as a sergeant within the UBCS. After Nikolai shoots Murphy, Jill confronts him, shocked and indignant, stating that he might not have been infected. He responds by calling her a bleeding heart and telling her to return to the subway station since they don't need her getting in the way. You're UBCS? Yeah, careful, careful. Come on, don't look at me like that, all right? I'm not an effective. No, 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 wait, please! <gasps> what the fuck? He was infected. He might have been infected. Oh, stars, this soft. No wonder so many of you dead. And what are you, UBCS, killing your own people? He would have turned. There's your sense of self-preservation. Go back to the subway station. I don't need a bleeding heart like you getting in the way. After moving on, Jill observes a nest that resembles a cocoon resting on top of the cables, which turns out to be a creature named Drain Deimos. The Drain Deimos are fleas that have been infected and mutated by the T-virus. Like many other creatures, the fleas responded to the virus by dramatically increasing in size, strength, and aggression. The Drain Deimos takes their name from mythology, in this case, Deimos, the Greek personification of dread. When Jill approaches the creature, she's infected in a truly disgusting manner. The thing forcefully inserts one of its appendages down her throat. Ew! Jill then manages to kill the Drain Deimos and reset the circuit breakers. Jill subsequently restores power to the substation and the surrounding area, which also destroys the nest of the Drain Deimos. Upon her return, Jill encounters Nemesis once more and escapes it. After escaping, Jill tells Carlos that Nemesis is still alive. She refuses to go back to the station until she has brought traffic control back online, despite Carlos's instruction to the contrary. Once she has arrived at her destination, Carlos gives Jill instructions to map a route from Redstone Street to Fox Park Station. Jill completes this assignment, rerouting the subway lines. Jill then runs into a freaky looking zombie with a long tentacle coming out of its head, which needless to say, surprises her. What the fuck? After escaping, Jill makes her way back to the station where Carlos is. On her way, Jill once again faces Nemesis, who is turning zombies into freakier versions of themselves by seemingly squishing their heads really hard. Once back at the subway station, Jill finds Carlos, 
who is joined by Tyrell, Patrick, and Nikolai. Nikolai, being the cheerleader that he is, tells them that they have little chance of escaping the city by battling their way out because it is teeming with tea-infected monsters. Nikolai then taunts Jill once more, saying that she is unreliable and will cause Carlos's death. But then, as Nemesis charges into the station, Jill closes the gate and makes the decision to use herself as bait in an effort to entice him away and maybe buy them some time. Because she's really just that BA. Oh, come on. Not again. It's me he's after. Hey. I'll buy you some time. Hey, wait. Wait, Jill. No! Come on, you creepy ass stalker. You want Jill manages to lure the nemesis away from the group, and she flees to the sewers via a ventilation duct. She tries to reach Carlos, but receives no response, so she decides to swim to the surface. Jill uses the sewers to enter the city above, where she encounters a large number of froggy looking creatures called hunter gammas. Nicknamed Froggers, the Hunter Gammas are frog-based B.O.W.s created by bonding human DNA with a fertilized amphibian egg infected with the T-virus. Although large in size, they were seen as useless due to several flaws in their fighting capabilities, including the fact that their mouths became vulnerable during attacks. Thus, Umbrella ordered their destruction. But a scientist that had become attached to the Hunter Gammas bribed a sewer manager in Raccoon City to allow him and some of his associates to move the hunters to the sewers to continue training and evaluating. They remained there through the outbreak in Raccoon City until Jill encountered them. When Jill finally makes it to the top, she calls Carlos once more, who is happy to learn that she's still alive and tells her that they will leave as soon as she returns. Just as Jill is climbing her way out of a set of stairs, however, Nemesis grabs onto her head, so rude, and throws her outside. It then pursues her with a brand new weapon, a freaking flamethrower. This forces Jill to scramble into the nearest building to escape its attacks. Jill escapes to the rooftop of the building, only to realize she has no choice but to engage the Nemesis in combat. The two engage in a ferocious battle in which Jill ultimately wins, eventually rendering it helpless by shattering its fuel tank. To escape the battle's fallout, Jill jumps off the roof, only to be almost crushed by falling debris. Once safe, Jill radios Carlos, who is angry that Jill turned herself into bait, but at the same time relieved to see that she is still alive. Jill, thinking she has killed Nemesis, tells Carlos that it is dead. But poor Jill, little does she know, this video is far from over, and so is Nemesis. In making her way to the subway station, Jill enters Kendo's gun store. A gun-wielding Robert Kendo jumps her as she enters, but she's glad to discover that he is okay. She offers to take him with her to the station, but he declines, telling her that he will be fine before saying goodbye and leaving. Fun fact about Robert, together with his brother Joseph, Robert designed the Beretta 92F, otherwise known as the Samurai Edge which were custom handguns requested by the Raccoon Police Department during the formation of STARS. Soon after Nemesis attacks Jill while still pursuing her and now brandishing another brand new weapon, this time a freaking rocket launcher with a laser guidance system, of course. Nemesis attempts to take out Jill in a number of ways, but is stopped when Jill enters the security of the subway station but not before Carlos shoots a gasoline tanker that explodes on the nemesis, telling her that he knows how to slow it down, but she must lead it back to the station. Jill and Carlos relocate to the station where they reconnect with the other UBCS members. 
Jill receives praise from Mikkel for her deeds and instructs her to board the train. The captain instructs Carlos and Tyrell to return to the city and locate Dr. Nathaniel Bard, whose work on vaccines might help the city. She is praised by Nikolai, who is waiting inside the train and who points out that Jill is finally beginning to understand just how important her own life is. On September 29th, around 2.11 a.m., Nikolai asks Mikhail whether he believes Dr. Bard might still be alive. Mikhail rejects him and expresses his fears, suspecting Nikolai of having ulterior motives. Nikolai simply offers a chuckle in response. That is when the subway train suddenly jolts and the nemesis appears on board the train. Jill, who is furious that the creature isn't dead yet, begins to approach and ready for an assault. But Mikhail stops her and tells her to get to the back of the train. Suddenly, however, Nikolai shuts the door, trapping Jill and the hurt Mikhail with the nemesis. I seriously hate Nikolai. What an evil two-faced him. The nemesis then deploys a tentacle to puncture and trap Mikhail. But in a final act of sacrifice, Mikhail uses a C4 explosion to try to destroy the nemesis, cutting it off from the subway car Jill is in. Jill is rendered unconscious as she slams against the train's walls as a result of the explosion. Carlos and Tyrell reach the temporary cemetery at the Raccoon Police Department a few minutes later. Having no idea of Mikhail's sacrifice or Nikolai's betrayal. Now that we have a minute, let's talk about Tyrell Patrick. Patrick was born and raised in Suriname in 1966. As Suriname achieved independence, Patrick left for Europe and joined the French Foreign Legion. During his time in the Legion, Patrick used his position to supply black marketeers with weapons, which, needless to say, is hugely illegal. The weapons were eventually traced back to Patrick. He was then court-martialed and given a life sentence. Umbrella became aware of Patrick's predicament and decided to barter with the French government for Patrick's freedom. This worked, resulting in Patrick eventually enlisting in Umbrella's UBCS. Soon after arriving at the cemetery, Carlos and Tyrell see Lieutenant Marvin Brenau being bitten by a zombified Brad Vickers. They are unable to stop the attack. Marvin then locks the station's front entrance before returning back inside. After eliminating zombie Brad, Carlos and Tyrell go inside the Raccoon Police Department after Marvin. Once inside, Carlos realizes that this is not a rescue mission, but rather a mission to capture and retain Dr. Bard, who Umbrella wanted to capture at all costs for knowing a little too much. On his way, Carlos confronts a liquor and a horde of zombies that have taken over the station. What exactly is a liquor? The exact process through which a zombie becomes a liquor is unknown. What is known is that liquors are the result of viral activation within a zombie, which causes it to mutate extensively to the point where its human origins are barely recognizable. The skin is shed, exposing the muscles. New muscle grows and takes the skin's place, giving liquors considerably stronger fighting abilities and agility than zombies. The skeleton is altered during the mutations, forcing liquors to walk on all fours, allowing them to jump and become more agile while allowing them to become agile hunters that can jump at prey. The eyes cease to function or are lost entirely, though the liquor's sense of hearing is greatly increased to make up for loss of sight. The liquor's tongue has also developed to be several feet long and is powerful enough to be used as a weapon capable of slicing into flesh. Carlos eventually makes it to the star's office and phones Dr. Bard, who informs him that he fled and is currently stranded at the hospital, which is overrun by B.O.W.s and zombies. According to Bard, Umbrella is taking out every researcher because they are the only ones who could implicate Umbrella by disclosing their illicit behavior and its connections to the outbreak. He tells them to rescue him before hanging up. Look, just send in stars. They're gonna know what to do. No, negative. RPD's overrun too. Then figure it out. Umbrella's gone crazy. They're killing all the researchers. I am the only one who knows how to make the vaccine to stop the zombies. So you can either sit there with your dick in your hand or send, send somebody who's capable of getting me the hell out of here. 
I like him already. Then as Carlos receives a communication from Jill, telling him that everyone on the train is dead and that Nikolai abandoned them to their deaths before abruptly cutting the conversation off. Tyrell attempts to hack the computer and track down Bart's location. At 4.43 a.m., Carlos leaves to get Jill while Tyrell stays behind to find Bart. Let's go back to Jill now. Jill had gotten out of the subway car earlier. Realizing she was the only survivor of the train wreck, she tried to call Carlos, but couldn't. Jill eventually makes her way to the municipal park close to St. Michael's Clock Tower Plaza, where she heard Nemesis' shrieking pain. Fucker's still alive. I can't stay here. After witnessing a flaming Nemesis crash his way down the riverside, Jill attempts to cross the pedestrian bridge. She is finally able to contact Carlos to let him know what happened after he departed. Before she can finish the conversation, however, she is attacked by a mutated nemesis. It's back! Jill! Jill, what happened? Jill, come in! This nemesis had emerged from the river, where it had dramatically mutated, and had changed from a humanoid creature into a vicious canine-like beast with enormous claws. Jill evades it until she is surrounded in the square and is forced to engage in combat. After a protracted battle, Jill finally manages to take the beast down with explosive shots. Jill, seemingly victorious, begins to walk away from the carnage. But before she can escape, Nemesis attacks her once more, gripping her by the feet and pulling her toward him. Jill, thinking quickly on her feet, fires the chain holding a metal gate. The Nemesis's arm is amputated as the gate collapses, but it manages to attack and infect her by impaling her arm with a bone spike before they both fall to the ground and collapse. Moments later, Nikolai sees her, evilly smiles, and thanks her, as if he had done anything to take out the beast. Interesting. You've done me a big favor, miss. Half a day later, Carlos discovers Jill and transports her to Spencer Memorial Hospital in the hopes that Bard can heal her. He radios Tyrell to let him know that they would meet there. Carlos arrives at the hospital on September 29th at 9.20 p.m. and places Jill on the bed in a makeshift sick room. Carlos then leaves to go look for a vaccine to save Jill's life. On his way, Carlos encounters a creature called a hunter, or Hunter Beta to be more precise. Hunters were created by injecting reptilian DNA into a human embryo and administering the T-virus as a bonding agent. One of the most notable aspects of the Hunter Beta model was their disproportionate left forearm, which was a flaw resulting from attempting to improve upon the Alpha model's attack power. The flaws in genetic modification can also be seen in the tumors covering the Beta's model's body. On the other hand, however, the beta model saw an improvement in its nervous system and agility, allowing it to better avoid injury in combat. Despite this, their attack power was weaker than that of the alpha model. Carlos fights several hunters and continues his search for the vaccine. Eventually, Carlos locates Dr. Nathaniel Bard's office and uses a tape player and audio tape containing Bard's voice to enter. On the tape, a young nurse inquires as to the purpose of the documents in his office. 
Bard responds saying how grandiose he is, insults her professional accomplishments, and mercilessly taunts her to return to wiping the patient's butts before telling her to go polish his shoes. All I wanted to know was what the documents were doing in your office in the first place. Who do you think you're talking to? I'm goddamn Nathaniel Bard. I'm the best biologist you'll ever meet, you bedpan changing waste of a nursing degree. Of course I have connections higher up. Of course the military consults with me on projects beyond your comprehension. So stop wasting my time with your nosy questions. I... Uh, I'm sorry, Doctor. You didn't read the documents, did you? No, I shredded them just like you asked. Good. Good. If that's all, you can go back to wiping your patient's ass. That's what they pay you for, right? And polish my shoes. Yes, sir. Yep, Dr. Bard sounds like some kind of boss. Although Carlos is unaware of it, he discovers a computer that has a video recording from September 29th at 11 p.m in which Bard claims that all of Raccoon City's suffering began with the release of a biological weapon known as the T-Virus. His employer, Umbrella, engineered the virus and instructed their team to develop a vaccine. Carlos is shocked to learn this and is perplexed that Jill continued to believe in him while knowing the truth about Umbrella. My employer, the Umbrella Corporation, engineered this virus and they ordered my team to develop a vaccine, which we did. Now, I keep samples of this vaccine here in my office. The rest of it is stored underground. But those sons of bitches at the board, they want to destroy it. They don't want the world to know what they've done. So they're trying to erase all evidence that the virus ever existed. No, I'm not a fool. I know they don't want me to... Jill knew all along, and she trusted me anyway. Fuck! At long last, Carlos is able to locate the vaccine in Dr. Bard's office. Afterwards, he rushes back to Jill and administers the dose, hoping that it is not too late to save her from the T-virus's grip. While waiting for the vaccine to take effect, Carlos is startled by Tyrell who barges into the room to show Carlos what the city is about to face. A city-wide missile strike to stop the outbreak at its source. Happened. Attention all citizens. The contagion spreading throughout the city has been designated uncontainable. On October 1st, Raccoon City will be completely destroyed in a missile strike. All residents capable of rational thought are urged to evacuate immediately. This is not a test. Carlos and Tyrell are interrupted by the sound of zombies about to attack the makeshift sick room. In order to defend Jill from the zombies who have surrounded the hospital, Carlos rushes outside to fight them off. This gives Tyrell enough time to break into the facility's security system and close the doors. When the zombie hordes break through the front door, Carlos uses a C4 explosive to destroy a pillar blocking the entrance. Carlos then returns to the makeshift sick room where Jill and Tyrell are. Carlos instructs Tyrell to make contact with a government official in order to postpone the missile strike while he looks for a cure. Suddenly, Jill finally wakes up, meaning she is not dead. Yay! Carlos enters the room and informs her that the city is now safe and the attack is finally done. But out of nowhere, he begins to cough up blood and begins to turn into a zombie. He begs her to shoot him because that is the only way, but she is unable to. Carlos, now transformed into a zombie, reaches out to devour her. this is just a nightmare. Whew. Jill suddenly awakens and turns her gaze to the television, which informs her that it is now October 1st 
and that there are only a few hours before the missile strike destroys the entire city. <laughs> so yeah, time's a ticking. After exiting the room, Jill discovers Tyrell is outside, trying to contact someone with the authority to halt the missile strike. Tyrell tells her that Carlos is underground trying to obtain vaccine stocks that would give the population some hope. So she rushes after Carlos without a second thought. Jill discovers a covert complex that leads her to an underground facility, where she picks up on Nikolai's trail and follows after him. She eventually reaches a research room, only to discover that Nikolai has fled. Tyrell suddenly appears in the room and tells Jill that he made contact with the government. He explains that the government will call off the strike, but only if they can deliver a supply of vaccine located in the underground facility. This is all the hope the pair needs to rally forward. Jill and Tyrell continue with their search for the vaccine supply, when suddenly they are ambushed by the mutant nemesis once more. Tyrell urges Jill to continue, just as the creature incapacitates Tyrell before impaling him with its tentacles. The nemesis then tosses his lifeless body. Jill makes a run for it and manages to shut the door behind her. After this tragic event, Jill continues her way through the facility. Jill traverses through several rooms full of nemesis creatures and capsules. One nemesis is bad enough. Imagine if Umbrella let all of these loose. Yikes. Anyways, Jill eventually arrives at a lab where she can manufacture the vaccine. She is successful. But as she grabs onto the newly created vaccine vial, a tentacle grabs her by the neck and begins to strangle her. And what do you know? It's the nemesis. Again. Jill struggles but eventually manages to free herself and get away. As soon as it looks like Jill has gotten away, she is once again attacked by the nemesis who grabs onto her ankle and almost pulls her down to a pit of death. But Jill manages to grab onto some ledge while at the same time accidentally dropping the vaccine. Nikolai then shows up out of nowhere and offers to make a deal, whereby she goes down there and fights the nemesis while he records the battle and obtains battle data, which he will sell off for profit. He says that in exchange, he will give Jill back the vaccine, but not before kicking her off the ledge. I don't think the wisdom I've been trying to impart on you is getting true. Now I know you can't put a price on life. But I'm in this business to get paid. So let's make a deal. You go down there, battle the nemesis, and I'll recall it all and sell the combat out. Put on a good show and maybe I don't need the vaccine. Agreed? Good. What a swell guy. Jill is then forced to battle the nemesis, who is even more ferocious than before. Then after severely wounding nemesis, Carlos comes to the rescue and slams a crane against the nemesis. This gives Jill the opportunity to hop onto the crane and escape. Carlos then floods the area with a powerful acid turning Nemesis into a nasty soup in the process. Yeah! Climb up. 
At long last, Jill catches up to Nikolai. She points her weapon at him and insists that he give her the vaccine, but he refuses. Just as the two are locked in a standoff, Nemesis breaks through the wall and crashes into the room. The blast knocks Jill onto the level below, allowing Nikolai to get away. But not before making a snarky one-liner about how you can't put a price on life. It's done. Give me the vaccine, you greedy son of a bitch. No, 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 no. You print money. I like money. We shall make ours an ongoing arrangement. Now drop the gun! Have you, have you ever seen anything so incredible? The data on this would be worth millions. But, well, uh, you know how it is. City's about to explode. And you can't put a price on life. <laughs> Good luck! Nikolai! What a jerk. Jill then comes face to face with the nemesis' final form. A huge mass of claws, muscle, and teeth that span from one side of the room to the other. When Carlos shows up, Jill instructs him to pursue Nikolai to the building's roof while she finishes dealing with Nemesis. Carlos reluctantly agrees. During the fight, Jill accesses a weapon container that houses a ferromagnetic infantry use next generation railgun, or finger for short. After wounding the nemesis, Jill forces the railgun into the nemesis's jaws. She fires the lethal weapon at the nemesis, firing one final shot to finally destroy it. Good riddance. With the nemesis finally out of the way, Jill continues to pursue Nikolai. She makes her way to the roof, where she discovers Carlos unconscious on the floor. Nikolai then strikes, knocking Jill's weapon out of her hands. He then throws the vaccine container onto the ground before shooting it, effectively condemning the city to total destruction. Jill is horrified by this and asks him if he knows what he just did, but his only response is that he doesn't care as his client ordered him to destroy Umbrella. Just as Jill is about to meet her end at the hands of Nikolai, Carlos rushes him and the two start fighting. Carlos manages to restrain Nikolai and barks at Jill to shoot Nikolai. At first, Jill is hesitant for fear of the bullet injuring Carlos, but Jill eventually agrees and shoots Nikolai in the shoulder. She comes to Carlos's rescue and he explains that it would be terrible of him to simply abandon her in the world without him. Just then, Nikolai warns Jill that if he dies, then she will never learn the truth. Jill retorts that she doesn't mind a little detective work. And so Carlos and Jill board the helicopter seemingly in agreement. Oh no. You're not going to stop. Promised you this, didn't you? Do you have any idea what you've just done? No, no. Don't care. My client ordered me to reduce umbrella to rub. Ten minutes until missile ah. impact. The missile has launched. And that is my cue. Goodbye, Miss Valentine. 
Shame you didn't listen to me when you had the chance. There's a price tag for everything. Even letting the world burn. <laughs> Who are you working for? I'll tell you, if you get me out of here. I'll pay you whatever you want. You're a fool. You're a fool! If I die, you'll never find out the truth. I don't mind a little detective work. <laughs> Finally, Nikolai gets what he had coming. Just as Jill and Carlos are flying out of the city, Jill watches a missile being fired by the government. It strikes Raccoon City, bringing it to the ground. The blast's shockwave causes the helicopter to rock. The game ends with Carlos sleeping, and Jill is left alone with her thoughts. She tells herself that all of the deaths and tragedies could have been avoided if it wasn't for human greed. Then and there, she decides to bring down Umbrella for their evil deeds, thinking that if the city burns to the ground, Umbrella would follow suit. The damaged vaccine container is shown being taken off a desk in the post credit scene by an unidentified individual. Perhaps Jill? It's finally over. So long, RC. I felt empty and cold as the heat from the blast washed over us. All this death wasn't caused by a monster-making virus. It was greed. Human greed. I decided then and there, the ashes of Raccoon City would be Umbrella's ashes too. I would end them, once and for all. This concludes the story and lore of Resident Evil 3 Nemesis. We hope you enjoyed the video and let us know what things you learned about the Resident Evil lore or if there are any other details we did not cover. Come join us next time when we look at the next game in the timeline. See ya!